These aren't the stories your mother told you. No, these are the other stories. <laughs> Today's episode of The Other Stories is Replication, written and narrated by Georgia Cook. You find the tape in an antique shop, the one your friend Mikey works at on Saturdays. Sometimes he lets you browse before opening time. You're not sure why you go. Least of all while you wake before dawn to do it. But you do. You like it there. The air is still and warm, filled with that tickly back of the throatness universal to junk shops. The shop itself is separated into cramped corridors of overstuffed shelves, widening into disparate clearings of battered display cases. You wander, peering through glass prodding at the occasional moth-eaten curiosity, sliding books from shelves to glance at their contents. You've seen most of this before. Coming here is like returning to an old friend. Perhaps that's why you like it. The comfort of the lost and unloved. That says an awful lot about you, doesn't it? Today, however, you find something new. At the back of the shop sits a pile of threadbare furniture, a chest of drawers, a battered wardrobe, a mirror thick with dust. You peer inside the wardrobe, blink at your reflection in the grimy mirror. Try the drawers. The top drawer rattles uselessly. You expect the rest to follow suit, but the bottom drawer opens easily. Something clatters, knocked loose by the movement. Curious, you reach inside. Your fingers brush something blocky and square, right at the back. You pull it out, hold it up to the light. It's a videotape. There's no label, but you see the reels of film inside, translucent and untouched. You wonder how long it's been sitting there, lost in a world of shadows. You show it to Mikey at the front desk. Oh yeah, the house clearance stuff. Mikey grins. You think it's someone's porn collection? You smile, but even then you feel the pull of it. You want to know what's on the tape. You have to know. Mikey motions you into the back room and drags out an old VHS player. You slide in the tape, half expecting a dud. For a moment, the screen fuzzes, then a room appears. My room. It's an old movie, says Mikey. The video quality is poor, rendered in black and white. You can hardly tell where the walls end and the floor begins. A recording of a video screen. A copy of a copy. A film of a film. You marvel at the graininess the way it jitters and starts. And then you see me. Hello. I dance in from screen right. You catch a blur of motion around my arms, my hips, my waist. A dress, a flash of necklace. It's hard to tell. Hey, you say. You can just about make out the actors, see? Christ, I wonder how old this thing is. You should never ask a woman her age. I take the opportunity to look you over. You aren't much, but then neither am I. A grainy silhouette, lost to the ravages of time and video degradation. It isn't long, my little tape. I do not speak, but you watch me anyway. Enthralled. The tape stops playing. Mikey sits back with a snort. What a load of bollocks. You say nothing. You want to watch it again. 
watch me dance in my world of static. But you don't dare. Not here. Not with Mikey. You tell yourself I'm just a cheap recording. Worse than junk. But when Mikey's back is turned, you eject the tape and slip it into your coat pocket. You can't bear to see me thrown away. So I go home with you. How very forward. Back at your apartment, you bundle into the space beneath the stairs and retrieve the battered VHS player your grandfather left you. You set it up in the living room, fumble the tape from your pocket and slide it in with bated breath. You press play. For a moment, nothing happens and your heart sinks. Then I flush to life, dancing across the screen. You watch my jerking, slithering motions. You squint to see my face, my bob-cut hair, my silvery dress. You watch me again and again and again. You begin to dream of me. In your dreams, you stand in my room. It's a small thing, draped in black curtains, the floor ringing with black tiles. You dream of the whir of film cameras, the acidic hot scent of backlock lights. You dream of me. In the dream, I am always too far away, a distant silhouette at the back of the room, dancing against the black. You reach for me, run for me, yell into the ringing silence, but you always wake too soon. You never learn my name. God, you wish you knew my name. You begin to conduct research, my little black and white world. You find nothing online. Why would you? A film of a film, a snippet of lost media, not even a name. You ask Mikey. Bemused, he gives you the house clearance address. You see the look in his eye as you snatch the paper from him, but you ignore it. He hasn't seen you in days. You take a bus, then two trains, then a taxi, out into the countryside. You reach an old estate, crumbling and barren. Moss grows from the gutters. The windows are dark and empty. An old woman answers the door. She seems surprised to see you. Just clearing the old things, dear, she says. Funeral was last Tuesday, if you've come for that. Uh, no, no, you say. I I'm here from the shop. Um, I've come about a videotape. A videotape? The old woman ushers you inside. You sit on a sheet-covered sofa, marvelling at half-packed dilapidation, while the old woman makes tea. You describe the tape to her. You didn't bring it. You didn't dare. The old woman's eyes widen. Oh, she laughs. That old thing. Your heart jolts. You know it. Only by reputation, she says. Aunt Lily really was odd with her keepsakes. Lily. Your heart jolts again. It's Lily in the recording. Oh, no, no. She couldn't stand to be photographed, could my Lily. But she doted on her little sister. She was an actress, I believe, back in the old days. Ran away to Hollywood when she was just 19. D do you know her name? Uh, the sister, you ask. Desperation prickles your throat. She shakes her head. She died before I was born. Must have been in the 30s. What, what happened to her? The sister? The old woman thinks for a moment. She disappeared, I believe, right after filming her first feature. Some dreadful scandal with the director. Lily must have spent her life searching. Finally tracked down a snippet of the film in some archive collection. It was the best anyone could do. A video of a video, you say. 
She nods. When the tape began to degrade, she filmed it again to make it last. I told her to get it looked at professionally, but she wouldn't let anyone watch it. She was always so self-sufficient. There's a wistful look in her eye. Your stomach twists. Would you like to see it? You ask. She shakes her head. Strange to think of it tucked away all this time, gathering dust. Must be worth something now. A piece of film history. You agree? Although you know in your heart you could never sell it. I, I see her, you say. Sometimes, in my dreams. The old woman gives you a strange look. Funny, she says. Lily used to say the exact same thing. You travel home, a taxi, two trains, and a bus back to your apartment. On the way you think of me, you think of my video, that fleeting snapshot of a life cut short. When you get home, you watch the tape again. You think perhaps you can see my face, just a little clearer now. You think of ghosts, how they live in photographs and scraps of writing, in diaries and voice recordings, echoes of life. You sit for hours, trawling websites and long forgotten forums. Mikey calls to ask where you are. You ignore him. Your work calls with a five day warning. You ignore that too. Every night you dream of me. In the dreams, I am a thing wreathed in static. You inch closer battling like an arctic explorer through snow. You feel as if watching the tape draws me nearer, sharpens the image. One night, you fall asleep on the sofa, my tape playing and rewinding on the TV set. When you close your eyes, I am there beside you, my hands ghosting through the air, my eyes blazing like black beads. For one fleeting moment, we touch. The sensation is electric. We flow together like mixed paints, like ink on ink, like the frames of a film. I am you. You are me. And when you wake, blinking and breathless in the dark, for a moment you aren't sure which one you are. You know, if we were ever to touch again, we would merge completely, you and I. Us. Me. You think you might love me. You think I might love you. But God, you aren't sure. You begin to see me in your waking life. Just flashes. Flickers on the edges of mirrors. Silhouettes poised in distant corners. A strain of static ringing out from a disused stairwell. Frames transposed across the world. You feel a connection you have never felt before. You feel my loss, my sorrow, my desperate longing to escape. What is art made for if not to be seen? You begin to sleep with the tape playing, a constant loop. Your parents call, they sound worried. It's been three weeks, you ignore them, you sleep. You dream, you don't go outside. You sleep, you dream. Finally, you fall asleep on the carpet in front of the television. Your apartment mired in fetid darkness. The world shielded by heavy curtains and weeks of neglect. And when you dream, there I am, beside you. My lips are so smooth, so black. My skin as pale as moonlight. You smell the hot dust of my breath, the camera flash warmth of my fingertips. You want to kiss me. God, you want to kiss me. You reach for me, and I slip into your arms as easily as silk. You lean in, although this close you see that I am little more than static and rough edges. An unfinished thing. 
You kiss me. You kiss me. You know what I will do, and yet you kiss me anyway. And then it all fades to static. When I open your eyes, I am lying on your sofa. Sunlight streaks through the curtain cracks. The air is warm and real. And I am you. Hello. I get up, eject the tape from the VCR, and throw it away. Then I clean your apartment. I put on your clothes. I call back your parents, using the voice they recognize as yours. They sound so relieved. I live your little life. I see you sometimes, peering out from behind my eyes. I smile, give a little wave. An actress must acknowledge her audience. After all, perhaps one day I shall give you a gift. Go to the antique shop on the high street. Prowl between the shelves. Perhaps I will attempt your voice, your mannerisms, and fool Mikey into believing I am you. Did you ever find out about that old tape? He'll ask. Nah, I'll say. Lost interest, mate. If he notices anything odd about you... He won't say. I am an excellent actress. Perhaps I will find an old videotape buried at the back of some forgotten trunk. Perhaps I will wipe away the dust, hold it up to the light. Perhaps I will even play it. A copy of a copy, a little slice of your life played back to you. And I play it so much better than you ever did. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I hope you enjoyed today's episode of The Other Stories. Replication was written and narrated by Georgia Cook, edited by Duncan Muggleton, with music by Duncan Muggleton and Tom Robson, and sound effect provided by freesound.org. The episode illustration was provided by Luke Spooner of Carry On House. A quick thanks to our community managers Joshua Boucher and Jasmine Arch, and to Carolyn O'Brien for helping with our submission reading, and of course to Ben Errington, the conqueror of worlds, and by worlds I mean social media platforms, and by conquer I mean he posts. Georgia Cook is an illustrator and writer from London. She's the winner of the LISP 2020 Flash Fiction Prize and has been shortlisted for the Bridport Prize, Staunch Book Prize and Reflex Fiction Award, among others. She can be found on Twitter at, at Georgia Cooked and on her website at www.georgiacookwriter.com. The Other Stories is a production of the Story Studio Hawk and Cleaver and is brought to you with a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license. That means don't change it, don't sell it, but by all means share the hell out of it. So, until next time.